Hey everybody, welcome to the Investor Success Webinar today. This webinar was created exclusively for you investors seeking lasting cash flow, more net worth, and really success investing in real estate the right way. My name is Jim Ingersoll and I get to be your host for this webinar. I've authored two books, both are on Amazon, also completed hundreds of real estate transactions since going full-time myself about 10 years ago. I created this webinar with the um, idea that I want to motivate you and I want to inspire you really to do more deals, help you increase your income streams and overall net worth. Be sure you've got a pen and paper ready so you can collect all your own aha moments and give yourself some specific action items tonight so you can take massive action right away. And We're going to dig into a lot of stuff from wholesaling to fix and flips to, to building a rental portfolio as a landlord. Um, and then at the end, we can take all your questions. All right, the idea is to make this year your best year ever. And how are you going to do that? That's what I want to talk about tonight. And I really want to focus on growth. Um, it's a phenomenal time to be investing in real estate. That's why so many new people are jumping back in. It's the strongest uh, real estate market I've seen personally since before the bubble. And I was investing before the bubble before. Um, so it's a really good time. The retail market is red hot. The rental market is red hot. And we're going to dig into all of that. But tonight I want to start with what's, what's in your head. Because you've got to believe that you can do it. And you've got to believe that um, you've got what it takes to pull off investing. Everyone thinks of GIGO, G-I-G-O, as garbage in, garbage out. But I want to challenge you tonight and change that around a little bit to good in and good out. G-I-G-O means good in and good out. And that's really where the success starts, the six inches between your ears. Here's what we're going to cover this evening. Um, we're going to talk about what investing success looks like and really what is your why for wanting to do this. And then from there, we're going to talk about how to crank up wholesaling deals. I'm going to talk about finding deals, uh, building your buyer's community. And then we're going to talk some about fix and flips removing obstacles that allow you to do more deals and make more money on them by funding them the right way and getting the right team in place. And then we're going to talk about the barriers of building a rental portfolio, which I know from surveying you guys uh, includes finding deals and also funding them. So that's the four things we're going to really look at and focus in on tonight. Let me ask you this. If somebody was able to take a transcript of your thoughts this week, um, what would it reveal? What would the big reveal be? Would it be that doubters are getting to you? Um, are you constantly around people that say, you can't do that? Um, you're not good enough? Being broke is a way of life? Or why are you even thinking about real estate? That's only for rich people anyways. Um, I like this graphic at the bottom because it's about the trash in your head. And I got this actually from my coach, Jim Palmer. So uh, if Jim's listening, um, I got this from you, so thank you. But we got to empty the trash sometimes. we got to take the trash out, and that starts tonight with what's in our head. If you're tired of struggling, are you tired of struggling, quitting, and giving up, thinking about giving up on investing? People can say what they want, and we as investors can choose to ignore them if you want. The idea is tonight I want to stir up some brand new passion for you. I've seen that happen with a number of the people that are on with me tonight, including you, Gary and Joyce Sims. When I talked to you last week, you said you are constantly thinking about and into real estate now, and you've got a brand new passion. So it's a little shout out to you. Your thoughts need to be positive, and they need to be hopeful and, and encouraged in order to make this the best year of your life. So are you ready for a fresh start? It's too easy to look backwards at all the, the problems we've had in life and the challenges and, and issues. And it's a lot harder and a lot more rewarding, though, to look forward to the life that you really deserve. So it's time to hit the pedal. And I want you to transform your thoughts. And I want you to take out the trash so you can go from an old junker like this old Bobo to a brand new Ferrari. So let's hit the pedal and get that moving. Here is your why. Your why is incredibly important um, to your success investing in real estate. And it's something that, that gurus don't really talk about. They just want to talk about strategies and all this other stuff. But your why is incredibly important. Maybe you're sick of your boss or you're sick of the corporate politics or tired of the business travel 
or tired of always having to go um, create sales for somebody else and you're thinking about quitting your job. You can't quit your job if you're doing real estate as as just a hobby. Okay? You've got to be able to generate enough fuel flow so that you can get out of your job and reliably walk away from it. I'm going to tell you how I walked away from my job in just a little while. You've got to be able to get out of debt. You you may be uh, getting ready to retire. Maybe you're thinking about uh, paying for a wedding or something like that. If you've got a, a daughter who's getting to be about that age. Um, all of that stuff is easy enough to attain. You can get yourself out of debt. You can get yourself a good, get yourself out of your nine to five. You can get ready for retirement or pay for a wedding. Um, all of that's no problem. Let me ask you this: Is it all only about the money? Because if it is, then then what Judas did in receiving his thirty pieces of silver to turn Jesus over would have made him happy. But if you know how that story ends, it did not end very well. He received 30 pieces of silver. That was a lot of money back then, guys, a ton. But it didn't make him happy. So finding success and understanding your why is really more about the, not only about the money. It's more about the person that you become because you learn to become independent. You don't uh, need to rely on corporate America to employ you. You don't need to rely on the government to give you any handouts. You're a capitalist. And that's more about becoming the person that you become than just the money. Here's what it is for me. I love being in a network where other people have high expectations of me. And they're willing to help me achieve my goals and build a life that has purpose and meaning. And that's really my why for even doing this webinar tonight. It comes down to two things for me passion and purpose. That's why I love talking about things like the 70-10-10 plan. Um, you guys know what that is? 70-10-10-10 says that you're going to live on 70% of your income, you're going to give 10% of it away, you're going to save 10% and invest 10%. And that's a good position to be in. You don't want to be in a position where your creditors are constantly hassling you and you're on a month-to-month -month, um, paycheck to paycheck type lifestyle because then when something uh, interrupts that lifestyle things get really hard. Hey let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am Jim Ingersoll. I told you I've written two books. They're both on Amazon. Um, this is my beautiful family that I've got here in the grass. Uh, to the far left is my daughter Melissa, then my wife Cheryl, my youngest daughter Carissa. And then in the middle here is my son-in-law, Luke. He's a realtor with Remax. And these two uh, little ones are my grandkids, um, Brooks and Neil James, the three-month one there, um, Neil James. So that's my why, by the way, is really setting things up for my grandkids at this point. Here are my two books that are both on Amazon. You can find them if you go to Amazon and search for my name um, or just pull up the books. First one was Investing Now. It's all about fixing and flipping houses. Um, and then the second one is cash flow now. The cash flow now is about creating multiple streams of income. It gives an overview of everything from wholesaling to private lending. I've also been featured on a number of magazines. And you can email me anytime um, tonight or tomorrow or whenever you're listening to this webinar. At my email is jim at investingnownetwork. Dot com and Jim at investingnownetwork.com. I do believe in giving, so if you've got questions um, about the content or training tonight, reach out and I'll be happy to help you. A couple months ago, I started this uh, podcast um, after the encouragement of my coach, Jim Palmer, who I've now talked about twice tonight. Um, and I'm really enjoying it because I'm bringing on some really cool guests. So if you're if you're like me and you create a mobile classroom or a rolling university in your car and you like to learn while you're driving around looking at real estate deals, I would encourage you to check out my new podcast. It's called the Investor Success Podcast. You can find it on iTunes or if you want to download some of the episodes, just go to bigmoneyinvestor.com. You'll see them there. And I've had a lot of really awesome guests on here. Two of them uh, here on the right include David Krulak. David's another author out of Pennsylvania. Um, great guy and a good friend. And then below that is Julie Carvelis. Julie is a high volume flipper. You might want to check that episode out also. 
My real estate journey began way back in the 1990s. My wife Cheryl and I got married in 1987. And uh, instead of renting, we bought our first house. And growing up, my dad made uh, real estate investing look so easy. So he was out buying duplexes and triplexes and stuff like that. And he was a part-time landlord himself. He worked full-time as an architect. And he made it look so easy so that um, back in the early 90s, probably five years into my marriage, so I would estimate around 1992, my wife Cheryl and I bought this beautiful pink house. And that beautiful pink house looked like tremendous cash flow on paper because there was an apartment upstairs and an apartment downstairs. And we bought that house for about 20000 bucks. We went out and got a bank mortgage on it. Um, and... From there, things derailed pretty quickly. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about some of the things that went wrong then, how much they cost me, and what I would have done different if I could do that deal over today. So I'm going to come back to this house in just a little while. But I want you to know, for anybody out on the call with me tonight that has had a struggle in a real estate deal, I want you to know it's okay. Because anybody who's done a lot of deals has had some struggles. But the thing with the real estate deals is real estate over time is very forgiving. So even if you do make a mistake, if you get some of the fundamentals right, you'll probably be okay over time. And I, and I was fine as well. So I'm going to come back to that one in a little bit. So let me ask you this. You're, you're on tonight because you have some interest in growing your investing business. So how about you? Do you want, do you want some growth or do you really want the same old results you've been getting? Take a look at the note on the right-hand side here. This was written on the bedroom wall of a house I bought about two, two or three months ago. Maybe a little longer than that now. Three months. Here's what it said. It said, I hope you folks enjoy, with an exclamation point, spent 20 years of my life here. And I met the young man that had written this and left it for us when we bought the house from his parents, who uh, split up, by the way. They got divorced, and that's why they were motivated sellers and ended up selling me their house. He spent 20 years in the exact same bedroom. Picture this in the bottom left-hand corner here. That's sort of what it was like. So he probably spent those 20 years in the same bed and nothing really changed. Life just rolled along um, day after day after day and it was roughly the same over those 20 years. Nothing changed. And when I met him, he was working at McDonald's and still living with his father in, in his mid to late 20s. Um, if yeah. you want to move forward, you've got to be willing to take action and you've got to be able to uh, do something different with your life. Otherwise, you're going to be driving the same old Chevette and, and uh, not moving yourself forward. So how much are you growing? What do, what do your results look like so far this year? Are you doing more wholesale deals? Are you doing extra fix and flips? Are you doing more rentals? And really, what is your plan for this year? What is your plan for next year? How about five years from now and ten years from now? Where do you want to be? I did a really awesome uh, podcast um, recently with Aliyah Ott, and she talked about this really cool concept about reverse engineering your life. And what that means is going out 5, 10, 15 years from now and picturing and writing down on a piece of paper where you want to be and then start reverse engineering it so that you know where you've got to be year 8, year 6, year 4, year 2, this year, 6 months from now, 90 days from now. And in the book Traction, it really talks about this concept of what do you want and need your 90-day world to look like so that you can start getting your own house in order so that you can hit your goals um, one year, five years, ten years from now. So I want you to think about that tonight. If you were going to reverse engineer your life a little bit, where is it you want to be in several years from now? So I want you to do this. Make today your start day. Start, draw a line on your paper that you're taking notes on right now and write start and then put today's date next to it. This is the date that you're going to get started. You're going to start working towards finding more deals and doing more deals, and you're going to multiply it. Um, I was recently encouraged uh, by a guy named Dave Stack that I met, and he said everybody should be taking their goals and adding another zero to it. If you added another zero to your income and your net worth goals, what would that look like? 
and what would you need to do in order to achieve it so that you got enough leads coming in so you can close enough deals so you can create enough income, build your portfolio, and build your net worth. What would that need to look like? See, I already know everybody on the phone with me right now is abnormal, and there's a lot of people on the call on this webinar right now, but I know that you know you're abnormal because the normal people would work nine to five, maybe go grab a beer and sit down on the couch and watch some TV. You're not like that. You are ready to capture your life and take your life back with some small steps. What's really cool is by taking some small steps and you repeat them regularly, you get to enjoy compounding growth. And I love compound interest. It's an amazing multiplier of life. But really success is the same way. Start with some small steps. Start with exactly whatever your starting line is right now. Repeat it on a regular basis and you will grow. So my question is, how much are you investing in yourself? Do you really believe you're worth investing in? You know, so many people come out of college with a ridiculous amount of college student debt, right? Student loan debt. How about you? How much did you come out with? You know, I went back and I looked at the college I went to, which was Rochester Institute of Technology because I was an electrical engineering major. And these days, that college, if I recall correctly, is thirty-five to forty thousand dollars a year. Could you imagine if I went back today and uh, did that five-year program at thirty-five grand a piece per year? It's a lot. But are you worth investing in? I believe you are. Um, but I, here's what I want you to do. I want to make sure that that you start taking some time to write your goals down. Less than three percent of the people in the country write their goals down but it all the peak achievers all the people that achieve high levels of success all have their goals written down so start with some small goals like what do you need to do in the next 30 60 90 days what skill do you need to learn so that you can begin to invest at a higher level begin to do more deals and it really goes back to taking the trash out in in that first six inches between our ears and make sure that you're feeding yourself the right information. So I always say you should have a lot of stuff in your library. The picture on the right is Thomas Jefferson's library. Do you think he had a lot of books in his library? He had a phenomenal amount of books in his library. And of course, I'm from Virginia, and this was a picture from the Library of Congress. There's a lot of Thomas Jefferson stuff around central Virginia. But you know, you don't have to, nowadays, you don't have to just only read books. I know people that don't really enjoy reading books. You can read a blog. You can, uh, you can also build your photo library with people that you meet and experiences that you get to enjoy. You can build your music library if you need to. Build your video library. This is your YouTube and, and uh, training videos and things like that. I've got almost 100 training videos on my YouTube channel, by the way. If you want to check it out, just Google me on YouTube. Um, this can include your podcast library. I told you about my new podcast, but there's a lot of really good ones out there. And another huge thing that you really need to consider doing is journaling your plans, your thoughts, keeping track of the people that you meet, the deals that you're doing, things you need to win, your wins, your defeats, because you learn from all of those. Here's the magic formula for investing success, in, in my personal opinion. It isn't subject to deals and self-directed IRAs and fix and flips and contractors and all these complicated terms. It comes down to three types of capital. The first one is your intellectual capital. This is where you invest in yourself and you learn what you need to learn about what a deal looks like how you're going to find it and how you're going to fund it and what your exit strategy is. That's your intellectual capital. Then you've got your financial capital. This is the money that it takes to invest in real estate. Now, if you're wholesaling, um, you don't really need your own money to buy the deals. We know that. You need some working capital for your marketing budget, but that's about it. Um, but if you're going to fix and flip or if you're going to build a portfolio of rentals, it takes financial capital. Um, when I first started investing in real estate, I thought I had to use my own money. Then I learned I could use the bank's money. Then I learned I could use other people's money, OPM, and that's the sweet spot investing. If you're using your own money and putting your own credit at risk, 
There's a better way to do it, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a little while. And finally, as, as powerful as intellectual capital and as necessary as financial capital is, there's nothing as amazing as relational capital. This is something nobody talks about, but your network becomes your net worth in real estate. If you need to do a deal fast because it's a smoking hot deal, you don't have time to go talk to the loan officer. You don't have time to call your hard money lender necessarily to get an appraisal and go through underwriting. This is people that you can call on and relate uh, and will have your back the next time you find a smoking hot deal. All right, so to make this the best year you, you ever had, you need intellectual capital, relational capital, um, and I'm going to tell you, you don't need your own financial capital, but you take these two first two uh, capitals, throw it with massive action, and you can really have a phenomenal year this year. That's exactly what John in Alabama did, and that's why I put his picture of him and I together, because I challenged John I, uh, at the beginning of this year. I said, John, if you want to start doing real estate deals, you've got to go out there and you've got to take massive action. And he asked what I meant by that. I said, John, here's my challenge to you. I said, go out and start making one offer per day until you start closing deals. One good offer per day. He did that, and he is closing a lot of deals now. You make yourself an action plan. Hold yourself accountable. And if you need to take my challenge, like if you're having trouble um, getting deals right now, challenge yourself to make one offer per day until you start closing some. So you need intellectual capital, relational capital. You put that with the catalyst, which is massive action, and you can do a lot of stuff. Um, I also think it's absolutely critical to meet other successful investors and spend a lot of time with them. One easy way to do that is to join a mastermind or start one of your own if you want. And this is like a smaller group setting of like-minded people trying to do deals. This is different than your local real estate investors club where there's lots of tire kickers and a lot of people on the outside wondering if they want to do deals or not. So how many deals do you need in order to meet your goals this year? How many leads would that require? And how many houses do you really want to make offers on? Here's a text I got from Rich Lennon. And a lot of people saw this marketing we did for, the, for this webinar. Um, I've been working with Rich about three years now when he first got started. And he texted me um, May 2nd and said, I just got 235 new leads on my hotline last week. Not all sellers, some are buyers, but that is a lot. And it is a lot. If you want to start doing deals, you've got to figure out how many leads you need coming in, how many houses you can make offers on, and start getting them closed and moving on. The same is true whether you're wholesaling, looking for fix and flips, or looking for rental portfolio. So how many deals do you plan to do this year? Write the number on your, on your sheet right there. Now, if you're doing fix and flips and rentals, how much funding do you need in order to buy that many houses? You know, um, it sounds pretty easy, but if you're going to try to buy, say, 15 rental properties this year, and your average all-in on those is 100000 a piece, you need a million and a half dollars of capital. This is a capital-intensive business, and the way you manage that debt is absolutely critical, and the way you... Um, protect your credit and protect yourself all the way through these transactions is absolutely critical. If you're going to do more deals, what does your team need to look like? What does it look like right now? Let me tell you a little bit about some of the people I've had a pleasure with working um, on this year. Um, let's see, over on the bottom right is Lori and then Rose. Rose came to me and said I helped her break the Da Vinci Code. There's Chris Mattingly. Um, in the, uh, in the suit there, he was a CPA and went into real estate full time, helped him make 37,000 on his first flip. To the left of that is, is Brian. He, uh, he, I helped him construct a really incredibly creative deal up in Northern Virginia, right near DC, and they actually banked over 100,000 on that first deal. Um, just above that is uh, Doug. I helped Doug with some negotiating. There's Jared uh, Cotton, myself, Jared's in Chicago. The bottom line is this. 
um, indecision is what's going to crush your dreams. If you want to be like Rose and Lori and, and Doug and Brian and all these people, you've got to be able to be decisive. Um, first of all, you got to decide what your why is. I went through that a few minutes ago. What is your why for wanting to do this? Then secondly, when you see a deal, you've got to know what a good deal looks like and you've got to be decisive so that you can negotiate and close with a lot of confidence when you're dealing with a motivated seller. Here's the bottom line. Don't settle for being mediocre. Don't settle for being average. Instead, I want you to really think hard about carving out the path of opportunities um, for the rest of your life. What is it you want to do? I talked about getting out of debt. Uh, maybe planning for retirement or your daughter's wedding that you've got to pay for. Maybe it's that your first goal is you want to quit your nine to five and get get away from your job. What is it? Maybe for you, it's you want to take your your wonderful wife on an anniversary trip to Paris, or join me on the next IRA fund cruise that we're going on again soon. What is it? Reverse engineer that life. Here's a whole bunch more people I've had the absolute pleasure of working with. A lot of young people on this list, by the way, which has been awesome. It, these are people doing massive amounts of deals and getting them done the right way. So here's a quick recap of the opening. First, I said GIGO is not garbage in and garbage out. It's good in, good out. Then I ask you to really consider what your why is. I like to say your why should make you cry. It's got to be so strong that you're willing to overcome all obstacles, take away all the excuses out of your life, and allow you to move forward. So that you can move forward when you've got a negative neighbor or um, an in-law or somebody, brother, sister, parents saying, yeah, that real estate thing, you know, that's okay for Warren Buffett or Donald Trump or, or Robert Kiyosaki, but it isn't for us. That real estate thing's not for us. It takes a lot of money to make money. That's just a myth you got to get rid of. I talked a little bit about intellectual capital and investing in yourself. Relational capital is super critical. And taking massive action is an absolute huge component to success. So let's dig into wholesaling. Who on the webinar today is interested in wholesaling? Who's done some wholesaling? Who wants to do more wholesaling? Um, a lot of people started wholesaling and then they progress. They move up the ladder. So they, and they may even actually start as a bird dog. But let's say you start as a wholesaler. Then you start to realize um, you could make more profit on some of these if you can fix and flip them. And then you realize you could work on your net worth goals and your equity if you could keep them and just be a landlord. And other people um, make so much money wholesaling that they, um, they grow their wholesaling from a part-time gig or a hobby type thing into a full-blown business and do extremely well with it. Here's the thing. Deals are in very high demand right now. Would you agree with me that REOs and buying from realtors are an easy source of deals today? No, I don't think you would agree with me. They're, they're not an easy source of deals because the very best ones are going highest and best, multiple offers, and people are paying too much for them. What do you need for a successful wholesale deal? You need a motivated seller and you need a buyer. That's it. And then you as a wholesaler make money in the middle, either with an assignment, you sell your option, um, or you just do a double close, simultaneous close. It's a very easy to follow process. It's very repeatable. The good news is there are tons and tons of buyers right now. There are so many people buying real estate. And if you're able to be the person that finds the deals, you're going to be in very high demand. It's a great time to wholesale houses. Back uh, a number of years ago when I left my job, I left it. I replaced my corporate income by wholesaling houses. And in my second year of, of wholesaling, I did over 100 houses in a year. So I know that it can be done. For me, it just turned out to be too much work to be a sustainable business. But it can certainly be done. It's a very, very good market for it. All right, you guys, I know a number of you guys want to talk about deal sourcing, and I'm going to take all of your questions in a little bit, but let's talk about it. <clears throat> Some of the ones I love are burned out landlords. Um, these are people that have owned houses a long time, typically, so they've got a lot of equity. They've also typically got uh, deferred maintenance um, that they don't have money to do. 
And uh, so their houses need to be fixed up. They've got equity to give away, and they become motivated sellers. The other thing with landlords is as they begin to age, their families typically start pushing them to get rid of assets. Uh, another big one is divorce. I showed you guys the writing that was on the wall of the young man's bedroom a little while ago. And the reason that we were able to buy that house is because his parents split up. They had lived in that house for 20 years. They had a lot of equity. It's a very sad situation. Um, but they were forced to sell very, very fast. Um, I also love expired listings. It's a really good way to go. I bought one just recently. And I remember sitting in the living room with a family uh, that I bought it from. And I, I sat there. And one of the questions I love to ask when I'm with people is, um, what do you want out of the sale of your house? And I remember they said they wanted an easy sale, fast sale, as is. And uh, they didn't want to have to go back to another realtor who's just going to plunk another sign in the yard because the house didn't sell. And they, it was on the MLS for like 79000 And I said, okay, so well, you didn't mention price. Um, so if I'm able to provide you uh, a sale where we buy it as is, we have a fast and easy sale. That's what you're looking for. And they said, yes. They ended up discounting that house heavily. We bought it. We held it as a rental. I love buying probated, probated houses. And I've always bought a lot of houses from people that have code violations. Here's a big tip that I want you to start thinking about. And I'm going to talk more about it in a minute. Um, think of it as the first success tip for finding deals and deal sourcing. Um, take what you do that uh, takes a lot of time every day and outsource it to a virtual assistant. It's a very easy way to go. You can find them um, all over the place nowadays. And think about that as we go here. Um, I've always relied heavily on referrals and bird dogs. Um, one of the houses we're working on right now was, was that way. I received a, a phone call in the afternoon and ended up meeting the, the seller in the, in the evening. And we wrote a contract, closed on our house two weeks later. Um, that easy. It all started with a referral. I've always relied heavily on bird dogs. I always said uh, driving for dollars is fine. It works really well. But why would I personally want to drive for dollars? If you put, think of it in terms of outsourcing um, to assistants and, and bird dogs and stuff, you got to think of your investing business a little bit differently. If you want a million dollar investing platform, you've got to value your time at a little over 400 bucks an hour. That's the amount of value that you want to provide to the marketplace. Um, and anything that's cheaper than that, you should be able to outsource, okay? That's if you're going to grow to a million dollar investing business. Anybody on the webinar tonight want a million dollar investing platform? So I always said it's not worth my time to drive all over the city looking for vacant houses. Now, I always like to outsource that and teach bird dogs and, and get referrals to go do that for me is the way that I like to do it. And when you do find a vacant house, what do you do? Um, you write the, typically people will just write the address down, go home, look it up in the online tax records, and try to figure out where the owner lives. And it's hard to track them down many, many times. Um, what I like to do is, is, if I was going to do driving for dollars now, is have a pad of paper, a roll of scotch tape, and I would write a note like, I'm interested in buying your house, call me, tape it on the mailbox or on the front door, and then go talk to the neighbors. Then go home, and then try to look them up, and, and so on. Speaking of looking them up, I've got skip tracing on the next line, but I want to dig into that just for a second here. Um, skip tracing is incredibly powerful when you're trying to find uh, owners of vacant houses because they don't live at those houses and figuring out where they, they live is, is really um, tricky. So the website I like to use is called TLO. Tim, think of it as Timothy Lamp um, Octagon, TLO.com. Anybody else on with me today like to use uh, TLO? Um, it's really a great website. You can get set up. Findtheseller.com also works pretty well. That's how you're going to start tracking down these people that own these vacant houses with the high weeds, the boarded up windows, and everything else. Um, 
you know, here's here's another tip that I don't hear anybody else talking about for finding sellers, okay? And it's so incredibly simple that I'm going to give it to you right now. And when this works, I would really love to get an email or a Facebook uh, post to me or something letting me know that it worked. Um, and that is to look people up on Facebook, LinkedIn, Facebook and LinkedIn. So you got the seller's name. Well, how many people in this world have Facebook? It's a very easy way to find somebody. Um, it doesn't work all the time. But when you find them, you can send them a Facebook email. And a lot of times those emails show up on people's smartphones as a notification, and you'll likely get a response back. Finding sellers is absolutely critical. And I, I know Gary and uh, Joyce are on today. They've, they've got an incredible story about how they tracked down a seller who lived on a boat. Okay, and I don't know anybody else who's actually tracked down a seller who lived on a boat, and they got an absolute phenomenal deal by doing that. So getting good at finding people is a critical skill that you need to get really good at. So there's a couple of tips for you. Um, online lead sources can also come from your websites. Uh, personally, I, I'm a big fan of Trevor Mock and, and the team he's built at OnCared. I think their templated websites are really, really good. Um, so getting those on, getting a online uh, leads coming in works very well. It works better in some metro areas than others. I've got some coaching students around the country that, that get the majority of their leads through their OnCare website. Others in different other metro areas really struggle to get them. So it depends a little bit on your metro area. I mentioned earlier about um, virtual assistants. It's really critical that you outsource as much as you can if you're going to grow your investing business. If you want to be like rich and get hundreds of leads in a day, or in a week rather, you've got to get a team of virtual assistants helping you do that. Because all these different deal sourcing things I'm talking about, they all work. But combined, they can be a lot of work, and they can be a lot to manage. So all you've got to do is you've got to learn to start finding a virtual assistant and then training that virtual assistant. And the best way to do that, if you've never done it before, is to find somebody and then give them a series of small tasks and ask them for deliverables each and every day. Maybe it could be when you're starting out as simple as um, go to my local newspaper online, um, type in every trustee sale that you see and email me the list in Excel. So you start with that and then you add on other things, other types of data scraping. So maybe they're able to go out there and retrieve some um, code violations or maybe they're able to go out there and retrieve some eviction data and then maybe they're able to go out there and retrieve some other stuff like maybe divorce and then they email that to you every day. Then maybe you add on something else, like call every for sale by owner and Craigslist every day. You start combining these things, and the thing is you can't do it all yourself. And you know, I, know I don't want you to. I want you to think in terms of growth tonight. What would it take to get more leads to get more deals? I mentioned earlier about code violators. You can just go to your local permit office, show up, and, um, and maybe there's something you want to... Uh, outsource to your bird dogs or referral network, but and just uh, ask them for the list of local code violators. If they give you a hard time, I like to teach my students to quote the Freedom of Information Act and the fact that it's public data and it's available to you. And ask for a supervisor if you need to, and you'll get the list. Sometimes it may take a few days, and they'll email it. Maybe they'll charge you if they have to print it, but you'll get it. I always have loved buying houses from landlords. They could be a great source of seller financing. They could be a great source of deep discounts. But where do you find them? Well, you can go to Craigslist. You can go to Zillow. You can look for the for rent signs as you're driving for dollars. You could do a, a trip to GoSection8.com and do it that way. Um, I know somebody uh, mentioned earlier they wanted to talk a little bit about direct mail, so I'll include this one as well. Um, depending on the type of deal that you're looking for, 
Um, some of the characteristics of building your list would include absentee owned, how much equity they've got, how long they've owned it, the type of house it's at, it is, the price point's important. All of these things are really important in carefully crafting your direct mail list. If you don't get your list right, you're going to waste a lot of money doing direct mail. But if you're able to create um, a good list, which is sort of like uh, baking cookies. My wife, Cheryl, is an amazing chocolate chip cookie cooker, baker. <laughs> and uh, she's got the recipe down. And every single time she makes her cookies, they're phenomenal. And I want you to think about your direct mail the same way. If something's off a little and you're not getting the results you think you should be getting, you need to tweak something. And if you don't know how to build a good list, um, you can outsource that too. I'm giving you guys tons of websites tonight, and I hope you're writing them all these down. Um, if not, you can listen for the replay. But uh, here's one. Go to yellowletterscomplete.com and uh, click through to the Contact Us tab, and you'll talk to either Carrie or Zach over there. Tell them Jim sent you. They'll take good care of you. If you need help creating a list, they'll help you create the list. Um, yellow letters are, are really, really uh, great at converting and getting your phone to ring. They still work very well, but some of the um, crucial parts of doing yellow letters have changed a little because so many people are sending them. So it's good to do what we like to call in our coaching groups a multi-touch campaign. So you send to the same list four or five times, and every time you send it in a different vehicle. So the envelope looks a little different, maybe a different color ink, a different paper. Maybe you, the third time you mail, you do a postcard, and then the fourth time you go back to a yellow letter. All this stuff is absolutely critical. Direct mail is a tremendous source of finding deals, but it's got to be done right. You've got to have the right recipe so that you get the right results. Bandit signs. Do bandit signs still work? I just did a video about this. It's on my YouTube channel. Yes, bandit signs still work. Um, I said earlier uh, I was going to give a shout out to you, Tommy Dyson, who's on the call with us, on the webinar with us. Massive action taking Tommy Dyson will tell you that bandit signs do still work. If you want your phone to ring and you want to increase your, your leads coming in, um, do this. Go out and get about 20 banded signs that just say, we buy houses in your phone number or whatever, sell your house today in your phone number, and put them out there in about a one-mile diameter of where you want to buy houses. When I was doing 100 wholesale deals a year, I got a lot of houses right off banded signs. And I would say something like, hey, uh, you know, how did you, how did you know I'm buying houses? And they would say, well, I saw your banded sign. And I would say, really, where did you see it? And they, they would oftentimes tell me they saw my sign two to three times. That's what you want. You want your message loud and proud in the areas you're looking for houses. Now, I do not um, think it's a good idea to violate your co local code, code and ordinance for bandit signs. I don't think it's a good idea to staple them to telephone poles or put them on the um, corner of the busiest intersection. But think about it, there's some other key ways that you can get your bandit signs out there without ever violating code. You want volume and you want your growth and you want to do more deals, you've got to be willing to take massive action. You've got to be willing to do what others in your local market are not willing to do. You've got to cast a wide net, outsource your lead generation, use virtual assistance and build a team. See, your team is critical to your success and really ties into relational capital. And if you really want to do a high volume of deals, you've got to establish processes, you've got to have systems, um, you've got to be able to uh, maybe have a buyer on your staff or helping you and build that team into a contract writing machine if you're going to do a lot of wholesale deals. Again, I said, guys, wholesalers are in high demand this year because he who finds the deal holds the gold, okay? So if you're able to find deals, you're going to do extremely well in today's market. You can really do as many deals as you want. That's why I sort of laugh when I see people saying they're going to 
uh, wholesale virtually or they're going to wholesale nationwide. Why do you need to wholesale nationwide when you can do probably as many as you want right where you live? Let's talk a little bit about your buyer's community. There's two types of buyers for wholesale deals, fix and flippers and landlords. And some of us on the call today are in both of these categories. I'm personally in both these categories, okay? Some people are. Some people are in both. All right, let's talk about where you're going to be able to build your list. Who are the landlords buying uh, in your area that are buying the most houses this year? Who are the fix and flippers buying the most houses? Write their name down on, on the worksheet you've got going there. And if you don't know, that's a huge action item. If you're wholesaling, you need to know the top three or four, five people that are buying the most houses in your area, what they want to buy, and you've got to pre be prepared. You've got to know what they want to buy, where they want to buy it, what type of house they like to buy, single family, duplex, whatever. And you've got to be able to deliver those, and you can start to do a whole lot more deals. Bandit signs also work great for building your buyer's list, just right on the bandit sign. Cheap house, handyman special, investor deal, half price house. Um, just get the yellow chloroplast signs at Home Depot, start putting them out there and people will start calling you. Online resources, you can start to call um, people that you see that are flipping houses and things like that. Investor club meetings are, are really a great way to build your buyer's list fast. Social media is super important. Um, if you position yourself and market yourself in Facebook that you're finding deals and you're posting pictures of them and what the numbers look like for the ARV, the after repair value, how much repairs it needs, and, and start to do that, you can build your list very quickly in social media. I'm only touching a little bit on your buyer's list because I'm telling you, if you find a smoking hot deal, you can assign it and do really well. But... If you want to grow your wholesaling business from doing a few deals or doing this part-time or doing it as a hobby or doing maybe three, four, six deals a year or 10 or 15 deals and you want to double that or add that zero on to the end, then you've got to get really good at managing your incoming leads. You've got to be able to negotiate and get to contract quickly. And you've got to build a strong buyer's community, not a list. All these real estate gurus out there are talking about building a buyer's list. It's a lot more than that. It's about the way that you market and position yourself so that people see you as the local expert wherever you are living. So if you're in L.A. or whether you're in Chicago or Charlotte or wherever you're at, always, in, in regardless if you're wholesaling, fix and flipping or, or renting, um, you should be positioning and marketing yourself all the time. What do you and your business look like online? Do you have a, a website? Do you have a social media platform? Um, what is it you do? Are you doing videos? Um, how are you letting people know what you do? Um, how do you present your deals to your buyer's community? I really like Rehab Valuator. How about uh, the rest of you guys that are on the webinar tonight? Do you enjoy Rehab Valuator? I mean, that's a company that was started by uh, Daniel Clayman and Daniel and I have a partnership in Bank Elimination Blueprint. It's a phenomenal software package. We have valuators. Check it out for sure. Um, the bottom line is you want to position yourself and market yourself as the local expert, the person to go to to find deals. And really, a lot more than just doing deals, you want to be positioned as a connector. Somebody who can connect a deal with the money for a deal. Somebody who can connect a deal with contractors. Somebody who knows what's going on in your area, where the heavy gentrification is, where everybody is revitalizing the city, the big projects, the developments. Position yourself as the local expert, and you can wholesale a ton of houses. Here's how not to wholesale. Um, you don't want to wholesale... Uh, houses that you do not have under contract. First of all, it's illegal. Second of all, it's unethical. Third of all, your buyers get ticked off like I do when somebody recently tried to do it to me. You also don't want to present bad deals with underestimated repair estimates and overinflated after repair values. Um, and I see a lot of uh, wholesalers doing this. 
um, I, I'll get an email from a wholesaler and then nobody will buy it for about 10 days and all of a sudden I get another email with a ten or fifteen thousand dollar discount the same house well that gives me an idea what their equity spread is and how much their assignments are and uh, you don't want to go that way I would suggest doing discounts in smaller um, chunks and frankly you shouldn't be wholesaling houses that aren't great deals that wouldn't sell at your original amount position your wholesaling business for success work on that relational capital and you will succeed speaking of wholesaling in high volume I told you I've wholesaled over a hundred houses a year but this guy is Tom Olson and Tom is based um, outside of Chicago and in, in, in the state of Indiana and he and his partner Wayne are wholesaling in multiple states so they wholesale in Illinois uh, Indiana Ohio and Kentucky four states and they've got the team to do it because they're wholesaling three to four hundred houses a year and I'm really excited because Tom's in our mastermind group so I've enjoyed working with Tom he's a class act and a fantastic guy so that's wholesaling and I'm gonna come back to your wholesaling questions at the end here what about fix and flips when you take a, a house that looks like a, a piece of trash and revitalize it and make it look beautiful it looks so easy on HGTV doesn't it when I started uh, wholesaling and fixing and flipping um, HGTV didn't even have uh, flipping ho flipping houses shows on it here's some of the challenges for fix and flips deal flow money and team you get those three right and you can fix and flip and do really well we all know the easy deals from the MLS are gone you know the last five years it was like going to uh, Applebee's and buying houses because you go to Applebee's and you look through the menu and you say I want that for an appetizer that for a main entree that's my uh, beverage and that's my dessert and that's how uh, over the last several years investors doing fix and flips bought houses they pull up the uh, email online they look through the MLS that their uh, realtor sends them and says I'll take that foreclosure on first street that one on 23rd this house over here on Wentbridge that house over there on Woodman Road and they got them those days are gone there's very few foreclosures on the MLS and the ones that are really good are getting multiple offers so how are you gonna find your fix and flips well the easiest way is to connect yourself with a great wholesaler we've been talking about wholesaling figure out who in your local market are the great wholesalers and if you don't know them off the top of your head take that as an action item see why people need wholesalers guys fix and flippers are are so busy getting all their materials to the job site uh, managing all their crews they don't have time oftentimes to go find their own deals now you can add resources and find your own deals if you want but it might not be your best use of time you're probably better off paying the wholesaler let's talk a little bit about the money challenges of fix and flips um, fixing and flipping houses is a extremely high capital intensive business um, and the typical way that people will fund deals for fix and flips is with these extremely high interest hard money loans that's fine for getting started if that's the only way you can really get started but if you're paying 15 percent interest and you're paying five points and a point is a percent so if you're doing a $200,000 fix and flip and you've got five points um, that's five percent or ten grand right there gone so I want to encourage you to find a way take this as a challenge as, and as an action item ditch your hard money lender and why do you want to pay points anyways just find people like you and like me that have money sitting in CDs lazy money sitting around in checkbooks or um, home equity lines of credit they can draw off of or retirement accounts which is one of my personal favorites self-directed IRAs and that will lend you money on your fix and flips at eight or ten percent with zero points that will transform your profit on your fix and flips the other place that, that investors get in trouble on is rehabs they underestimate the repairs they don't have the time energy and experience and resources to understand what the hidden cost on things they can't see they fail to add contingencies into the budget um, they don't do all the upfront work to get all their bids and manage that budget 
the bottom line is you need a system approach. And I'm going to reference back to Daniel's uh, software package rehab evaluator because it's got a great budgeting capability in it. It'll help you not miss expenses. And if you're going to grow your fix and flips, well, you've got to manage your timeline because if you go long, you're going to have more interest that you're paying to your lender. Um, you've got to watch your contractor change orders. In other words, when a contractor comes to you and says they found this, um, don't just say fix it. Say, explain it to me and let me understand the expense associated with fixing it to avoid surprises. The whole key to fix and flips is avoiding surprises. Um, a huge problem that I see with rookie fix and flippers and people just starting is they run out of money. If you run out of money and you're not done with the rehab, OMG is all I can say. That's when you start to stress. I don't want you to stress. I want you to enjoy the process of transforming a huge hunk of garbage type house into a beautiful, beautiful house that a family is going to move into and begin to make their own memories. Contractors, I've seen contractors um, abuse of investors that don't know what they're doing. They give them huge amounts up front and the, and the contractor runs away. You've got to build your contractor team carefully and you've absolutely got to borrow and manage the debt the right way. Just like I said. So hopefully there's some things you can work on there. Here's some more action items in this area. Um, number one, eliminate your hard money lender and you'll start making an extra five to ten or so thousand per deal. Does that sound like something that would be worthwhile learning? Invest in your contracting team. Um, make sure that you understand what their capabilities are, what their insurance is, what their licensure is, um, and all of that. Workers' comp. There's a lot of things that you got to really understand in that area. Do your due diligence up front and plan up front is absolute key. You've got to lock in your budget and you've got to lock in what that it's gonna, house is going to sell for when you're done. Here's the bottom line with fix and flips. There's a lot of moving parts. It's the highest risk investment because it's like being a day trader. But when you do everything right, you get fantastic paydays when you're done. Here's the negative side of fix and flips. If you stop doing deals, this is true with wholesaling too. You stop doing deals, you stop getting paid, and you never build any equity or any net worth. All right. Here's, I have such an amazing uh, mastermind crew that I get the pleasure of working with great flippers. Here in the, in the top is, is Bo Eckstein. Bo's in um, San Francisco, does very high-end uh, fix and flips. Bo was on HGTV on one of these flipping shows for a while. Um, down below that in the bottom left is uh, Gavin Welch is in uh, Florida. Doing uh, Typically he's got eight to ten fix and flips going on at the same time. On the right there is Ghani. Um, Ghani just uh, just sold two more houses last week and is rolling. If you do it right, you can create really nice paydays. If you do it wrong, you're going to take a bath. I don't want you to take a bath, so I want you to do it right. All right, let's talk a little bit about rentals tonight. Um, I love rentals because they're the one investment that keeps paying over and over and over in monthly cash flow and allows you to build your net worth. The cool thing is there's all these different asset classes that all work really well. So you can do single family homes, which is a door at a time, multifamily, you can do mobile homes or parks. You could even do turnkey rentals um, if that's what you want to do, though I don't advise it. You can invest outside of, outside of your local area. So if you're in California and you're wondering what you should do, I would recommend if you want to build a, ro a rental portfolio based on cash flow, to consider areas like Mississippi, Tennessee, or Indiana, maybe Ohio, some places like that. You can also go into passive investing and build notes and things like that. The, the key is you've got to know what your investment criteria is so that you can maximize your equity gain. You've got to know where the market is swinging, where your gentrification and revitalization areas are locally, and you've really got to manage your price to rent ratio and that cap rate carefully. From there, you've got to be able to give that criteria to go out and find your own deals, uh, maybe some off the MLS, though it's doubtful, or most likely directly from wholesalers. Now, if, you, uh, if you're like me and you want to eliminate the bank, because I don't like banks, 
Um, you can go out there and capture uh, seller financing. I see Anto's on tonight. I remember Anto three three years ago uh, in Kentucky got those townhomes at 2% seller financing. That is a great deal. You can rely on portfolio lenders. That's like a local regional bank. Also, credit unions work really well if you need to rely on a bank. What I love to do is to rely on private lenders. I do a lot of equity and debt finance uh, money that I don't have to go to the bank for. You can also learn to raise money, but you've got to do it the right way so you don't get in trouble with the securities exchange. So you've got to do a syndication and, and raise money in a fund, but you've got to do it the right way. It works really well for apartment complexes. Then you've got to be able to manage your, your contractors again and manage your tenants. And this is an area I see a lot of um, beginning landlords get in trouble. And it's where I got in trouble back in the 1990s. I didn't know how to manage. So if you're just starting out or if you're on the West Coast and you want to buy and invest halfway across the United States, I highly recommend you get a really good property manager. Here's the biggest struggles on rentals that I'm seeing this year. People are having trouble getting the right long-term funding. I see people trying to fund rentals with hard money loans. You don't need to do that. Those hard money loans are 6 to 12 months. That isn't good long-term funding. Management systems are not there. They don't understand how to, how to find, market, and screen tenants. And they're just plain poor property managers. It's the biggest area that I see um, people having trouble with. Now, like I said, here's some more people in my mastermind group. And this is Jared Codd in the upper right there. Jared's got a, a ton of rentals in the Chicago area. Um, a lot of them are inner city. But I remember Jared three years ago when, when he quit his job and went into this full time. Bottom left-hand corner is Matt and uh, Victoria Starr and their kids. Matt is a young man with huge goals. He definitely put the zero at the end of his goals and is, is making it happen. You know what? We become the average of the five people we hang out with the most. That's what Jim Rohn said, and I really believe it. Based on that rule, I think there is a way to shortcut some of our success using masterminds. And I want to talk about it a little bit. A couple of years ago, several years ago, I read this awesome book called Think and Grow Rich. Have you read it? It's a phenomenal book. And I continue to reread it every year. And I've also got it on audio. My wife, Cheryl, is really great about letting me listen to it in the car when we take long trips. But he introduced this concept of the mastermind. And he described it this way, deliberately seek the company of people who influence you to think and act on building the life you deserve. Deliberately seek the company of people who influence you to think and act on the building the life you deserve. Another way to say it is surround yourself with people who are successful and that are willing to exchange their specialized experience and knowledge. That is how you shortcut your path to success. Get in the right room with the right people who are willing to give and pour into you and help you succeed. Because masterminds are phenomenally powerful. It's a great forum for bouncing ideas around and picking each other's brains, talking about what's working right now and foster new ideas, refine out some old ones and share opportunities and things like that. So here's a key mastermind principle for you to write down. Your associations have the number one biggest impact on your success. Your associations, the people that you're hanging out with. If you're with constantly with people that are negative, um, who think the world is going to come to an end if the Republicans win or everything's going to die if the Democrats win, none of that really matters. You're going to do well at real estate regardless if the Republicans win the next presidential um, election or the Democrats. You want to be with people that are positive and people that are successful to help you um, move forward, people that can elevate you and people that can challenge you. And I'm hoping this, this webinar tonight will help start that for you. I said draw a line on your paper as your starting line. I want to elevate you. I want to challenge you. That's why I asked you how your goals are going and ask you if you're willing to put another zero at the end of them. I always like to say if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And I really believe this. 
you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. It's a humbling thing, um, but leave your ego in check and get into the room with some other people. And that's why I love masterminds, because it's an opportunity and a forum for us to share knowledge and to share experience and talk about what is working right now for finding deals, for um, finding contractors and sharing resources, and how to find sellers that live on boats and things like this. It allows you to participate in other people's deals. Here's the next key principle for masterminds. Relationships with positive and successful people lead to your personal success. This is the key to relational capital. You've got to believe that you will become successful if you engage with and do life with other successful people. And here's the final mastermind principle. The more you give, the more you receive. It's the reason I'm doing the webinar tonight. I like to help people. And I know without a doubt that the more I give, then the more that I will also receive. It's just the way that it goes. Um, here's three huge uh, reasons that investors typically fail. But I only really want to um, take a look at number two and number three. I'm going to leave number one away. The first one is giving up when it gets hard. Giving up when it gets hard. Let me tell you, when I started wholesaling, it was hard. I would find a deal and not have a buyer. I would find a buyer, not do a deal. I would meet a motivated seller. They would tell me they'd sign my contract, and then they wouldn't sign my contract. Then everything just started to click because I didn't give up. Here's another really important one on uh, avoiding failure. Inability or unwillingness to make a decision after you've got some information. I said earlier, you've got to be decisive. You've got to know what a deal looks like. You've got to be able to make a decision very, very fast in this market or another investor will, and you're going to be sitting at the curb. So to recap, those are three major mastermind principles. Your associations have a huge impact. Relational capital and being with the right positive, like-minded, successful people will lead to your personal success. And the more you give, the more you receive. That's why I love masterminds. I started off saying uh, this quote from Jim Rohn, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So on your piece of paper that you're taking notes on right now, write down the five people that that you typically spend the most time with. You can not include your, your kids and your spouse and things like that, but outside of that circle of influence, who are the next five? And I want to challenge you to work on that list to get yourself around people who are successful and willing to help you succeed. So that is what it's about. Success breeds success. And I'm a huge fan of Jim Rohn. He's really taught me a lot of stuff. All right, I told you a little bit about this pink house. This was in Jamestown, New York. It's a very small city. My dad made landlording look so easy that Cheryl and I jumped right in. This $21,000 duplex looks so good on paper. It's a three-bedroom downstairs, two-bedroom upstairs. What do you think some of the problems I immediately ran into are? All right, let me go through the list. Um, undercapitalized. That house needed a tremendous amount of work, and I had no clue. I didn't, know, uh, I didn't have any money to do it. Typical landlord um, who bought a house that needed work, thinking he could just rent it as is, didn't work that way. Number two, my property management philosophy um, didn't work. First of all, I was working full time as an engineer, and I would uh, I would have to meet tenants in after hours and weekends. It's a hard way to do it. I should have hired a property manager. Instead, my property management philosophy was: you show up, I show you the apartment, you like it. Let me see if you have a pulse and a security deposit. Yep, you're in. No application. Sign a lease. Give me your deposit. Move in. No screening. Bad mistakes. I was in way over my head. I was young. I was about 25 years old. Cheryl and I have been married four or five years at this point. We both got married very young and um, didn't know what to do. So uh, I ended up taking a job transfer to Virginia, and I had to get rid of this house, sold it on a land contract. About three or four years later, the thing burned down, and it's gone. That house no longer exists. So my question is, is it okay to make a mistake? Is it okay to make a mistake? This house cost me about 10 years of investing. 
because my wife Cheryl said, this is enough. This landlording thing does not work. I will never be a landlord again. Hurts. She made me take about 10 years off of investing because I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have any training. I didn't have a community. I didn't have a mastermind group. And I didn't know what I didn't know. I just thought as an engineer, I went through the numbers on paper, 21000 My mortgage was probably three or $400 a month. I have two income streams. There is no way this can fail. Big time failure. So let me tell you a little bit about my turning point on how I came back into real estate and I did it the right way the next time. See, um, ten, fast forward 10 years and we're up to about the year, say 2002, 2005. And my heart was saying, yes, I want to get back into real estate because climbing the corporate ladder thing was getting old. I was getting sick of it. They had me traveling all over the world, opening up factories. I didn't realize as we opened up factories in China and Mexico that they were going to come back to the United States and close the factories uh, here. And I got sick of it. So my heart said, yes, I want to do this thing, right? And my wallet was saying, ah, man, it's a really risky time to go out on my own, to leave my own 9 to 5, to leave my job, my cozy 401k. Um, I even had a company car. I mean, a lot of things. And even worse than all of that, the, the reliable, some, somewhat reliable income, the, the 401k and the car, worse than that was my own two daughters were in just about the high school time. What comes after high school, guys? College. So my heart said yes, my wallet said no. It was sort of like this emotional um, arm wrestling thing. So I talked to my wife Cheryl about it. I said, you know, I really want to do this investing thing. It's not a good time for me to go out full time, um, but I want to take the risk and go for it. And I had to do it differently this time to convince my wife it was the right way to do it. So I listened to people like Warren Buffett, who I still love listening to, by the way. And he said, to be successful, you've got to have skin in the game and a stake in the company. So I did that. I went out and I did that. I said, I need to start working on improving the average of the five people I'm hanging out with. And I met this guy named David Phelps, Dr. David Phelps out of Dallas, great friend of mine. He's got a phenomenal mastermind. David and I, um, 10 years ago, joined the same mastermind. And even though my, my wallet said no, my heart said yes, my wife approved, so we did it. David and I have been friends ever since, and we've helped each other achieve new levels of success all along the way. There's my wife, Cheryl, with, with Elizabeth from Toronto and Quincy from Houston. Um, attending masterminds changed my trajectory from being a failed landlord to becoming a good wholesaler. And I did a lot of wholesaling, guys. When I tell you I did over 100, all of these are houses I wholesaled. And obviously, I can't show you that many. But the time that I knew I had it was when I was at a beach. I was at Huntington Beach on the West Coast on vacation. And I got a call from an investor who said he wanted to buy one of these houses that you're looking at a picture at. I said, okay. I said, um, I'll fax you from the hotel. And we did the deal. And I thought, you know what? If I can make money and, and wholesale some houses while I'm on the beach on the West Coast, these houses are on the East Coast, this wholesaling thing and this real estate thing is going to work out just fine. I always go back to what are your goals for 2016, 2017, 2019? How many deals do you want to do? These are my original business cards. I recently found them. Um, I did my marketing and positioning around cheap Richmond homes, built a gigantic buyers list um, of thousands of people, and I used to do on a regular basis these investor bus tours, which are a unique way of throwing 50 or 60 people onto a charter bus charging them admission to get on, and then wholesaling four, six, eight houses on a Saturday. Works out really, really well. From there, I went up. I started to say, you know, all these houses I'm wholesaling, why don't I take them and start to fix them up? So the kitchen on the right that you see where that butcher block and the old lantern and stuff became the kitchen down below. That's the exact same room. The, on the left, that's a house that we bought recently. We redid that one also. Did really well 
fixing and flipping that piece of trash into a beautiful home. And we loved it. From there, I went on to do seller financing, and I loved 0% interest and did some subject to deals and self-directed IRAs. And I really learned that my network truly is my net worth. And I had to start building that quickly. That's why I joined more masterminds, more coaching programs. And my aha moment was when I turned my someday into right now and started to make it happen. And then I created last year this really awesome mastermind called the Investor Success Mastermind with people like Bo Eckstein, who I talked about, who was on HGTV, and Jared from Chicago, and you see Cindy from Mississippi, Barb and Kevin. There's Tom at the bottom with his wife. Tom is the high-volume wholesaler out of Indiana. These are all people that are like-minded, trying to have a big impact where they live, do more deals, add the zero to their goal, and get it done. And people kept asking me, Jim, why do you want to do that? I had to really think through why I wanted to lead this mastermind. I realized uh, one of the people I love learning from is John Maxwell. And I love it when he said, success is when I add value to myself. The significance is when I add value to others. As I add value to others and I watch them succeed, people like Rich and Kevin and Bo right here, that's when I find significance for what I do. It's bigger than doing just my own deals. That's why I love this whole concept of finding investor success through real estate masterminding and coaching. And you can check out um, the offer I've got for you at investorsuccessmastermind.com backslash join um, if you would like. Let me just type that in for you. So we created this and um, it's been a smashing success really fast and it's got a lot of different um, uh, parts to it that I'm going to share with you as we go here. But I've got it, I've had the opportunity to see it make a big impact on people's lives. Some of the folks in our mastermind are on the webinar right now. I've been talking about them. The key is to get in the right room with other in successful investors taking massive action. That's when you get a lot of synergy and you start to um, share ideas. Uh, we have we happen to have one at, uh, several actually at our last live mastermind we did together, and um, as a result of it, I got about 40 leads on houses today from from somebody that are all really good subject to leads, and I'm going to follow up with them. Um, you got to get in the right room with people that are willing to share and willing to help move you up the chain. Um, so. There's a number of different facets and benefits of being in our mastermind community. First, you get to be in the right room with people like Tom and Bo and, and uh, Tommy and Joyce and Gary and others. Um, you also get one-on-one -on -one personal coaching with me, 30, month, 30 minutes a month. Um, but I'm also quite available for any 911 type help you need via email, text, or call. And then we also get these group mastermind sessions. Some of them are virtual via webcast. Others are in person. Um, and we get to work on marketing. We work on your websites. We work on your deal flow, your lead generation, your funding, all of those things. So if you're interested in checking out the offer, go to investorsuccessmastermind.com backslash join, and you can check it out actually right now if you'd like. Um, the other thing is these, these masterminds that we're doing are really, really powerful. We all learn from one another as we share because we're all doing deals. And that is a great way to learn. Um, I also give tons and tons of extra training courses, a full document library. I mentioned earlier about the emergency deal help. Also got a private Facebook group. Now you might be wondering how much this is. Is it 20,000, 35, or 50, um, like all these HGTV stars are starting to come out with and uh, flip this house and flip that house? These people who are on TV are charging this kind of money. But the good news is I am not charging that kind of money. My goal is more than a monetary goal. My goal is to add significance into other people. So we're doing this for $8.95 a month is the bottom line. So this is a snapshot picture from the Investor Success Mastermind dashboard that, that all the members get to enjoy. 
you can see all of the courses. You get all these boot camps, but you also get seller financing, which includes lease options, subject to deals, and owner will carry. You get the fix and flip. I told you if you do it the right way and you vet your, uh, build your contractor team the right way and buy the right house for the right price, you can do really well. You want to do some volume wholesaling. Cash flow creator is for landlords. That's the one on the right. And a really good way to go. Here's a, a sneak peek into the uh, Facebook group. You see Christina here. I said, Christina, how many rehabs do you have going on right now? We currently have 22 active rehabs and another 20 to 25 lined up. These are the type of people you want to be in the room with who can help you grow your rehabbing business. People like Christine. Uh, masterminds are just super powerful. I love doing it. Um, it's a way for me to get in the right room with the right people as well and works out really well. Warren Buffett is so smart. He said invest as much uh, as, in as much of yourself as you can because you are your absolute biggest asset by far. So this special that I've got tonight is $8.95 per month. It's actually more on the main website. I think it's $9.95. Um, and I also waive the application. Normally, the way the process works is somebody will find uh, InvestorSuccessMastermind.com online. They fill out an application. The application emails to me, and I vet it. But the bottom line is if you're on the call tonight, and I, I know a lot of you guys, because I'm looking through the list here, David Doyle and um, Marla and Max and all you folks. Um, if you're on with me, I know you're abnormal, or you wouldn't be spending your time with me right now. So I'm going to waive my vetting, and I'm going to I'm going to take a chance on you and make sure uh, that you're the right fit for our group, because I am careful who I let into our group. I want people that are going to be willing to give as much as receive, and uh, that's how all of us grow together. I said earlier I talked a lot about being decisive, and it is absolutely critical that you become that you are decisive in really everything that you do. Um, and you've also got to work on finding time to build that relational capital and really have time to think. You know, people like Bill Gates and people like that block out periods of time in their year where they just think. They go away from their house and from their local community and they get into a setting that allows them to think. That's one of the things I love about masterminds. Um, and this whole th concept is that you'll be able to work on your business rather than in it all the time. If you're rehabbing houses, you're like these guys coming out of Lowe's right here with a cart full of stuff, and you don't have time to think and grow your business. And you've got to break out of that mindset where there is no time to grow my business. You've also got to decide yes for your own success. You've got to be willing to commit to building systems building teams and people to support your growth for the long haul. And that's why I put Investor Success Mastermind together, and you can find this special webinar, uh, exclusive special for you tonight, at InvestorSuccessMastermind.com backslash join. You've got to decide yes. Expand your network, expand your income streams, and find ways to expand your net worth. And that's what the Investor Success Mastermind is really all about investing in yourself and investing in your future. And there it is again. And these are some of the people that are in it. That's Kevin Thomas in the middle. Kevin's a note investor. On the left is Rich Lennon. He does, um, he's a landlord, but he also does fix and flips and a little bit of wholesaling. On the right is Bo Eckstein, who is on HG. High-end uh, fix and flips, who's now turned into a passive investor in the Midwest. Um, and I, if you've already uh, clicked through the link and you've already joined our community, I just want to say thank you. Uh, make sure that when you get into the dashboard tonight that you schedule our one-on-one -on -one coaching session. I want to talk to you really quick, like in the next one to two days. And I'm pretty available, so go out there, click on that, let's schedule some time together and make this thing happen. And I want to go through um, with you what your goals are, uh, what your roadblocks are, and help you develop some action items to doing some deals and doing more deals. This is perfect for you if you're a wholesaler already and you're kind of doing it casually or as a hobby and you want to quit your job and, and do wholesaling as a business like Tom does. 
So you can jump to a whole lot more deals. Add that zero on to the end. We got to work on with you wholesalers what your lead generation funnels look like, your buyers community, your systems, your processes, and your teams. There's Tom right there. So Tom is doing a lot of wholesale deals and really has got all of that down. I talked earlier about Rich Land and Rich just implemented Podio as a CRM to manage those hundreds of leads he's getting every month and he's doing a great job with that. There's Jared in Chicago. Maybe you're fixing and flipping a few deals and you're ready to leap up to do a lot more deals. Maybe you're looking to do 10, 15, 20 deals a year and you got to figure out how to do that. I invite you into our community. You're the type of person we want in here at InvestorSuccessMastermind.com backslash join. Maybe you're a landlord building a rental portfolio and you're stuck trying to grow right now. And you've got to be able to find more houses. You've got to get your management down. You've got to get your funding right so that you can do that. I just did this with Bill, Bill, and, uh, Bill Purifoy in Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, Bill was struggling to buy rentals. He joined the Investor Success Mastermind, and in the last three months, he's bought three more. He's on an average of one per month. He's finding deals that he never even saw before because he was focused on the wrong thing. So that's it. I look forward to seeing you at our next uh, webcast mastermind and our next face-to-face -face mastermind. Um, if you've already joined, I want to thank you. I want to encourage you to jump in there. There's a lot of training in, in your dashboard, all those training courses. There's also a link for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. You'll also see where you can contact me for emergency deal help at any time. And I really look forward to working with you. People, oh, let me just introduce a few of our members. I talked about Bo. I did not talk about Gavin very much. Gavin's got a phenomenal podcast that you've got to check out if you like podcasts. It's called the REI Loop Podcast. Um, he's a broker. He's a flipper. He's typically doing about eight to ten rehabs at a time. And that is it, folks. That is it. Go to InvestorSuccessMastermind.com backslash join. And I really look forward to doing that with you. Um, and we're going to go to your questions in just a minute. Um, that's it for this uh, special Investor Success Mastermind. I did record this webinar for you, and I will be emailing you a copy so you can go back and play it again. I referenced probably 20 different websites and web resources, a lot of key action items, and some really cool aha moments for you as well. And uh, again, I'm Jim Ingersoll, and I've really enjoyed connecting directly with you on this webinar tonight. If you're ready to grow your investing business, Join me at investorsuccessmastermind.com backslash join. And uh, at this point, we're going to move over to your questions. So if you want to talk, you can raise your hand, and I will unmute you. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to the top and pull some of these, start pulling some of these questions out. All right. Let's see. Lonnie, I see you're beginning wholesaler. Uh, that's good. Marshall, it's nice to see you. Lonnie said he's interested and ready to get started now, which is great. Steve Wise here in California. It's a tight market. Let's see what he says here. This looks like the first question. Steve, uh, Steve says, Jim, I'm in California and I need help with direct mail, the type of mail or postcard or letter, type of list and where to get the list and how many times to mail to. Okay. I know, Steve, that you typed that question in before I talked about direct mail, um, but your list is absolutely critical. I really like going to absentee owners. I like going to owners that have owned their house at least 15 years, so I know they've got a lot of equity. Out of state, owners also works really, really, really well. You can go to listsource.com and build your list, or you can use the resource I gave you, yellowletterscomplete.com. They'll help you build that list, and they do a good job building a list also, by the way. I like to use a combination of yellow letters and postcards with a multiple touch campaign, and you've got to be committed to mailing to the same list over and over if you're going to get the best results on your list. Let's see. Marla said, uh, what company do you like to use for virtual assistance? 
you know, um, I used to, I would refer you to the ODesk, but it recently changed names. I think it's Upwork now, and uh, that's a good place to go and get started. You could also go right to Craigslist, but I would go to the uh, what's the current version of the ODesk. Just put that in Google Marla, and you'll go on in there, and uh, you'll start to find plenty of virtual assistants. You've got to vet them. You've got to find the right one. Really read through their uh, recommendations carefully. There's tons of real estate virtual assistants in there. All right, Steve asked about finding the right zip code for doing direct mail. That's a great question, actually, Steve, one that people overlook all the time. Um, Steve, I can't remember if you're a wholesaler, landlord, or fix and flipper. It kind of varies a little bit. Um, but you don't want to go to the most expensive areas because that's not typically where investors go. So you want to go down in price probably below median, so if your median is 200, you might want to go to 100 or something like that, and that's where you're going to find the deals. The people struggling to find deals right now are the people staying in their cozy suburbs instead of going to the inner city. I just did a video um, from Biltmore when I was visiting there, and I talked about determining your price point, and if you go over to my YouTube channel, you can, you can check that out, Steve. So good. It's a good video about price and flexible funding. Um, and deal in accordance to all this training. Well, I think uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by flexible funding, Edgar. Um, if you clarify that a little bit, there's there's equity funding. That's where you give up some of the cash flow and some of the future equity when the asset is sold. Um, if that's what you meant, that's uh, what I was probably referring to. All right, let me see if anybody's got your hand up. Let's see. Jay, I didn't know you were on here. How are you? Kim Wheeler, there are so many people on here tonight, Roscoe and Sean. TJ Ward, thank you for the uh, text you sent me right at the beginning. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Max has his hand up. I'd love to say hello. All right. Hey, Max, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me okay, Jim? Yes, you sound good. How have you been doing? Oh, things have been unbelievable. I brought a guy out to my team. We did our first bird dog deal together, and he quit his full-time job, and he's just sourcing deals for me all day long. And we we're, we're got so many leads, we don't know what to do with them all. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's unbelievable. So here's, did, here's a – Did ahead, you yeah. find – your, did you say your bird dog's up using the training that I give Craigslist? It was the exact training. I followed it to the T. It was, you know, the very that great webinar that you did, the marketing one. That's yes. what I did. Awesome. Hey, here's my question, Jim. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, to everybody who's listening, gosh, if you take Jim's advice, it'll work. You have to do the work. I'm doing the work, and I appreciate everything. My question is, is I'm creating some content right now, some video content. It's regarding, um, you know, uh, how I find deals and how I negotiate, uh, you know, good deals with motivated sellers. Okay. My question is I'm not sure the best way how to get that content out there because I'm not really sure how that type of um, – information would be perceived by a potential motivated seller. Well, do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, not yet. Okay, I would create a YouTube channel. I would t do you have um, do you have an on carrot site? Yes. Okay, so you got some you've got some marketing and positioning in place. Um, what's the name of your website? Uh, it's a uh, maxbuyshomes.com. So I would create a YouTube channel called Max Buys Houses or Buys Homes, and I would start putting content there, and then you okay. can link, you can link that back over to your your website. So and if somebody if somebody's interested in oh go ahead sorry I'm sorry go ahead I was just thinking you know if somebody is uh, a motivated seller and they're interested in selling their house. And they are looking around at me, and they're like, you know, what's going on with this guy? And they watch a three-minute video where I teach people how to get smoking deals on houses. Aren't they going to get a little put off by that because I'm getting the smoke? I, I deal misunderstood. Yeah, they they might. So what I would what I would do with your videos is continue to to use them to find deals. 
I think that's okay. a better use of your your time. So I would I would just go on if you want to do videos and videos are super powerful. I would create some videos just talking about some of the sellers you've recently met and how you were able to solve their problems. Okay. And okay. Start linking that back and that you'll get a better bang for your buck doing that than teaching others how to negotiate. Thanks, Jim. Yes, sir. Keep up the great job. Thank you. All right, and that's Max in Dallas, Texas. Guys, the, the bird dog training just flat out works, and um, I highly encourage you guys to, to do that because it just works, and um, you heard it from him straight up that it works. If you want to find deals, some of you guys are struggling to find deals, you know, that's an easy way to get it. And what I can do is I can uh, I can email you the information that he referenced a few minutes ago in the follow-up for you guys that are asking for it. Anybody else want to talk? Just raise your hand. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I hope you guys carefully consider joining our community. We're looking for other good investors who can help elevate all of us. I want to encourage you guys and inspire you guys and motivate you guys to focus on doing more deals this year because the market is phenomenal. It's a great time to capitalize. The key is finding your deals. And it's also, here's one more thing that's really important. I call it shiny object syndrome. There are so many webinars that come out um, that teach the latest and greatest strategy and, you know, the, the $250,000 flip and back flip, front flip, forward flip, side flip, um, this strategy, that strategy. And as investors, we can get shiny uh, object syndrome and start chasing all of them rather than really focusing on something that could become a core business that we can grow and be a repeatable stream of income for your families. So I would encourage you guys to do that. Figure out what it is you like to gain. Keep it simple. Wholesale, do fix and flips, or build a rental portfolio. But don't immediately try to do absolutely everything and chase the latest and greatest thing that's out there over and over. Instead, get good at doing a deal. Rinse and repeat. Keep it simple. Do it over and over and over and over. And just, uh, so, so to speak, keep on milking that cow. All right, hopefully that was that was good for somebody. All right, guys, I, I wish you guys the best, and I really thanks thank you for participating in this webinar tonight, and I hope everybody has a wonderful night. See you guys later.